you think going in your job is going to be this very glamorous the tinder india team was just the marketing team creating a brief takes four people executing that brief takes four plus four plus four plus plus four it's like being in a situation ship with your with your brand is just like we want to put brands directly in touch with people who are creating pop culture we have let go of our first client uh, already uh, this by being 3 months old social media post if you don't like it delete it come up with something else but only way to get a chase to share do you want to make it controversial ever as people used to be assholes some i see if i still have clients in a job after this Hello everyone. Welcome to the Breaking Uneven podcast. We love to talk shop, play a few games and uncover the beauty of failures. Today we have with us Viren Narona, the founder of The New Thing. Viren, how are you feeling? Pretty good, man. How are you? All good. Feeling? Ready? Um now when you ask me that again no this, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, Viren, your path right out of college has always been geared towards advertising and marketing from a couple of independent agencies to a whole host of network agencies and all of that stopped with Tinder and Swiggy. where you were pulled into the world of well funded tech companies mm. after which you finally decided to hack it on your own so that's a good fair description i mean hack it yeah but sure <laughs> <laughs> so it makes you sound like i jumped around job so much and then i was just like oh shit fuck it oh we're going to get into that as well <laughs> you have jumped around the job yeah, i do your intro was just like oh you bought smoked a bunch of independent agencies and i was just like ah oh, that takes me back <laughs> So let's let's uh, we'll get to your journey, but before that, we'll play a quick little game to understand TNT a bit more. Got it. Yes. So we're gonna play the Twitter bit challenge. Twitter is known for its 280 character limit on every tweet, which sometimes makes it a little difficult uh, to convey your thoughts. Got so it. it takes about 20 seconds to speak 280 characters, and you have to explain to us the new thing in 20 seconds. But we won't make it easy. We also want you to use one emoji and one hashtag in your tweet. Sure. So, cool. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Mm-hmm. So three, two, one, go. So the idea for the new thing started with uh, my co-founders Gautam and PG. They've uh, started this agency called Talent. The idea came from the fact that uh, it's not good enough to just put an idea out there. You're supposed to make sure that it seeps its way into culture. Uh, and honestly, the idea for a separate agency to do that is how we came up with the idea for TNT. Chai emoji hashtag the new thing bomb exclamation. <laughs> But now exclamation mark I have to cut out. You have zero point one two seconds remaining. How much does it take to put an exclamation? <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that the speed at yeah. what he was speaking was insane. But yeah, you are under twenty seconds. Cool. I didn't even stammer once, sir. Huh? <laughs> yeah, but let's get into what you were talking about. Yes, yes. Around jobs. So yeah. something that did stand out to us is that all your experiences, except Tinder, uh, have been limited to around a year or so, give or take. And so why is that? And why was Tinder different? Uh. I think for me, right, uh, and to any creative professional out there, just to sort of come in with this expectation of what your job is going to be like after having watched a fuck ton of Mad Men <laughs> on repeat, uh, and also sort of reading books about Ogilvy and the kind of stuff that they teach you in ad school, you think going in your job is going to be this very glamorous, maybe not monetarily first, but like this constant brainstorming, working on ideas that turn into case studies. Uh, Getting to meet the who's who of the ad advertising industry, marketing industry, clients being fucking awesome and happy. This was not the case for a. I mean, and a lot of people other than still relate to this. That I think advertising and marketing looks very cool from the outside, you know, because it's the way we dress and the way we talk and all this fucking drinking. Uh, but when you actually get into it, what I was doing for my first two jobs was just sitting and making social media posts day after day after day. Thirty uh, social media posts a month. And to think about it now. With the fact that TND strongly stands against creating 30 social media posts a month, uh, to me, a lot of the times it just didn't align with the way I was looking at social media marketing or 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 brand building in general, right? Uh, I saw it as this as this factory where dumb and this is big cliche, right? If you come into advertising going right and you leave, I was like this cynical person who never wants to come back to advertising ever again. And I just didn't want to do more of that because I didn't want to hate the one thing that uh, that I felt that. I was sort of put on this planet to do. Uh, hence, I didn't stick around uh, long enough for me to become that cynical version of myself, right? And then it was different at Tinder and Swiggy. At it, okay. So, how how big do you think the Tinder India team is? I love asking people this question. Ten. No. I would say at least like I don't. I would presume they have in India ten people. I would assume they have developers here just because of our country's like 
expertise in that. So I, I don't know. Maybe like Apache has an expertise, so they had a lot of developers. It makes sense. Yeah, they I mean, five like, people. It, it, it was, was five people. people. It was five people. It was house closer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You have to cut that part out, huh? Which part? The part where our country has the expertise. We have no expertise. No developers, nothing. The Tinder and India team was just the marketing team. Uh, so, so we had no client servicing. We had no nothing. We were just a bunch of five young people trying to figure out how the fuck you make a dating app that's been around for a very long time that has a sort of that competition out there. How do we make this one of the coolest brands on social, right? Uh, in the wake of Craig launching with a fuck ton of money and Zomato constantly doing something, how do you make people care about like a dating app in a country where dating is still in its very sort of nascent stage? Uh, but I think we managed to do a very good job purely because we would just like it said Seth Godin says right committed creative people can truly make a difference. I feel like we were five committed creative people. Uh, shout out to Rashi, shout out to Samraj, shout out to Taru, shout out to Rana, <laughs> shout out to Anukul, uh, shout out to Mercy, uh, who just came together to make really cool shit happen with one brand. Uh, and that was that was why I think Tinder was the longest thing because I was just like fuck this is this is what I want to do. Uh, for at least the next 10, 15 years, but then I only stayed for two years. <laughs> I just want to quick, quickly pick up on one thing. When you compared it, you compared it to what a Zomato was doing or a Cred was doing, right? Like it's not, it's not what Tinder would classify as its competitors. So why did you make those two comparisons? Specifically? Well, I was talking about it in the, in the sense that everybody's looking at what Zomato was doing marketing wise and food in India is such a big, yep. uh, like point of convergence for people when it comes to content, right? Even in terms of cred, I wouldn't say the product or what they were doing with uh, Raul David and all of those popularity and all that shit. From a marketing standpoint, it reminds me of what MTV used to do marketing wise. They're really like tapping into culture and doing cool stuff. I mean, the budget must have been insane. Uh, I'm not saying that we didn't have those budgets at Tinder, but I think we walked, up, we went about it in a very sort of smart way, uh, which is trying to figure out what's happening in dating, where the mind space is when it comes to dating. And really just try and bring out, not word of mouth, but, but lean into what people are saying about the brand and let our content come from there as opposed to show you this shimmering picture that doesn't actually exist, right? Which a lot of our competitors used to do. <laughs> uh, which we don't believe in doing. Like we want to show you it as it is. The good, bad, ugly. That's, that's dating, right? It's not always this positive mindset. Yeah, fair enough. And I think it's um, the fun you have with it as well, right? Yeah. Like, have you heard of Thursday? Yeah, it's yeah, a, the dating app is out of the US. Oh, yeah, 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 of course, of course. Yeah, their yeah. marketing isn't. I actually even, didn't even Hinge. If you look yeah. at what Hinge used to do, they deleted all their posts <laughs> on their page and their whole philosophy. Like, I mean, of course, it's part of Match Group as well, so I can yeah. talk about it. But the whole tagline was designed to be deleted, right? Yeah. Like it's yeah. As a dating app, of course, you want people to get the fuck off your app yeah. and meet somebody. Yeah. Uh, which means that by definition, you can't have them on your app anymore once you meet someone. So I think it's pretty cool. Uh, but right, I think what I loved about the job is I got back into writing again. I got back, I started learning how to design. I started my Twitter account thanks to Tinder because like my boss had a Twitter account and he started it because of Tinder and he was like, dude, if you're not doing it yourself, how the fuck are you going to give feedback to your agencies? So I think what Tinder did teach me was one, you have, you have, to, you have to do the job. You can't just like keep outsourcing your skills to other people. You have to actually be able to do the job. Uh, and it also gave me a healthy respect of the agency side because it is not easy being an agency. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, it's not easy for agency professionals. Like my heart goes out to them, uh, but that's just the state of where it is right now. Yeah. Yeah, and like um, so, when you were at Tinder, you said there were five employees, yeah. and all of you were part of the marketing team. But did you all still work with agencies? Like yes, that? yes, okay. yes, we did work with agencies. Uh, so, we, what was the need for? Well, I mean, it's two sides, right? I think, uh, oh, the way I like to say it is creating a brief takes four people, executing that brief takes four plus four, plus four, plus, plus four, <laughs> plus four people, right? So I think uh, coming up with a direction for the brand was, was where we sort of really stepped in and was like, we were like, okay, this is what needs to be done. Uh, and brief writing, right? Like that's another thing that I think the industry really needs to take a hard look at is, a great brief will result in great work from your agency. A lot of briefs that I've received on the agency side. <laughs> I don't know what you want from me, man. Like, what is this? And I hate when people are like, 
open brief go <laughs> just no boundaries that i'm just like no please give me boundaries i don't know what to do with these boundaryless situations no um it's like being in a situation ship with your with your brand it's just like how do you know what's happening here what are you doing but uh, yeah that's what it was so yeah okay so after being on the brand side you then decided to start your own agency so there are so many agencies yeah. in mumbai in india around the world why did you want to start your own i actually never wanted to come back to the agency side when i was at tender and swiggy obviously the money is great and stuff but i never wanted to come back to the agency i never thought i'd ever start my own company uh, i fully blame gautam <laughs> for this because we were just uh, we were just not talking uh, and this was off the back of our campaign why is this a swiggy ad that that won like a bunch of awards uh, curious being a few yep. of them uh and i think the synergy that we found on that campaign between me and the talented team uh sort of sowed the seeds for this idea of an agency that was one not fully formed by creators because there are a lot of agencies that are fully formed by creators but an agency that's led by creators uh, as part of a network which is the talented network uh that not only has the chops to make your ad films and your print ads and your outdoor stuff as well but also something that is just purely focused on culture marketing right and this is a big problem that most brands will face is you never get your social agency and your mainland agency to be on the same page at the same time right they're always like even though the brief is the same it's almost like they just don't want to fucking work together yeah and that's so fucking frustrating as a brand manager because they're just like okay i need to make sure this dude's on the same page this dude that's on the same page then there's this job that they don't want to be going to find somebody else So here, within the talented group, you have from the get-go uh, your social agency and your mainline-ish agency, not just on the same page, but in the same office, sharing resources, always talking to each other. Uh, and you can see evidence of that with the Google "Make It Safe" Huna campaign. You must have seen the Flipkart "If Phone" campaign, uh, the IBO campaign. I think it's just a breath of fresh air, uh, at least from what I can see or what I would have wanted as a client. And then, so. I mean, we we were just going to get into that. So TNT is a is a sister agency to Talented, and we've obviously had GNPG on the podcast before as well. But what is the dynamic between the two agencies? Is there a monetary dynamic as well? How does it how does it work? Is there a monetary dynamic? I I mean, with any agencies that sort of work together, there's obviously some kind of uh, you know sharing the load of the work that's currently there, and then there's just like splitting of expertise. so we're very clear in terms of okay this is like even though we're part of the same system, same network we do map out a scope of work so that you know talented knows that this is what we're going to handle yeah and we know okay this is what we're going to handle the simple philosophy being just do what you're fucking good at <laughs> you know this i i i released an article recently that just spoke about how agency should say no uh, yeah because this urge to say yes to everything a client says and then like oh no I, i'll say yes to have all the money but i don't know how to fucking execute uh so we do say yes to stuff that we know we can handle and of course we're a growing agency so i mean over time we'll be able to say yes a lot more uh and the the thought is not that we continue working together always on every single project these are two different agencies but as a writer there's a strong understanding or there's a strong what i would like to say the uh dependability not from like a i need to depend on you to fill in the gaps that i don't have but oh if i I need to get this idea executed. There's a part that I think TNT would be perfect for, and there's a there's a trust factor that I think uh, holds up the relationship a lot more than this. You have to work with each other all the time. You know, uh, I was in an agency. Uh, I can't say who right now. I'm going to say who. <laughs> you know what? Beep it out. Okay, I'll yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I was at uh, this agency, and then they forced us to work with this production house that was in house. Right? It wasn't like we had a choice. We were forced to work. with them right even though they were not the best person for the job here talent isn't forced to work with us we're not forced to work with them but right. there's just the strong understanding of what each other are good at and i think that's the basis of a healthy working relationship right like when i know this dude's going to sort out my stuff we know they're going to sort out this stuff let's just like join hands on this project uh, interesting so coming to you know um finding clients and stuff like that i think a lot of people that start out their own agency do so because you know for example they've won awards etc they've they've worked at a larger network agency mm-hmm. or a very large independent so they know a lot of clients that they can bring with them or they've made enough of a like personal name in the industry 
from the agency side to do so. Oh, you're just totally going to shit on me now. Right? I'm not shitting on you. You're just going to shit on me right now. Like, oh, these guys know who, the who's who. And then comes you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I guess my question would be that, for example, having a client roster to begin with, hmm. is that something that you had? No, you didn't have that. And so, how did you tackle that? Because it's a big risk and like kudos to you on taking that. Your, your, your question is, is starting an agency when you're not already a big shot a difficult thing? <laughs> no, uh, no, of course it's a difficult thing. But how do you... Because you would have thought of this, you would have had a way to navigate it. What was that? Oh, no, man. There was, there was no like hard and fast. Way. I didn't have like a call sheet of clients and I'm just like, hey, give me a business, give me a business. <laughs> no, I think it was just the the fact that we had a clear idea of what we wanted this agency to be, right? Again, I'm not saying it's formed fully of creators because there are a lot of agencies out there that are there. But I think it's led by creators. And the idea is you want to put brands directly in touch with people who are creating pop culture. And, and that's, that's honestly what we went the brands with and a lot of them like we kind of cold pitched and they they seem to fuck with our shit, man. <laughs> which, is, which is good. They seem to vibe with us. Of course, over time, uh, we will make improvements in terms of what we're able to offer. And as we get bigger, we'll be able to take on a lot more. Uh, but I think just going to them with this you know, this little picket board of like, hey, here's what we believe in. And also hearing that they believe it on the other side, they've been waiting for someone to come out and say this. To me, it was very refreshing. To me, it was very encouraging. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the, the two clients that we had just came out of the blue. Uh, touch wood. <laughs> so you initially said that, okay, yeah, you're against like the 30 posts a month and like you have strong beliefs in that sense. So where does that come from? Like the change in thought of what, Everyone else thinks of marketing as. Uh, I mean, I throw back to you guys. Why do you guys think thirty posts a month is important? Like, can you? I will ask any client this, yeah. and they'll use one. They'll use it and they'll say algorithm, and then you probe them a little further. Okay, what algorithm? And then no one's gonna have an answer because this <laughs> thing was some scope of work that was circulated in two thousand seventeen, two thousand eighteen even before that, and everyone just been passing it around, you know, just <laughs> in the way that you get an SOW from your senior, right, that you used to then pass on to your junior. And I think it's archaic to think of social as this, oh, we need to post every day. No, man, we don't need to post every day unless you really know what you're posting every day, right? It's not a question of quantity, it's a question of quality. If you fix your quality metric, posting 30 times a day, 30 times a month is, is going to be a breeze for you. But if you start off with this new agency that's still trying to figure out your brand and force them to follow this 30, 30 posts a month is, is a lot, is a lot dude. Yeah. Your team's going to be unhappy. You're always going to be chasing. You're always going to be behind schedule. No, and to be honest, if you take, for example, creators right on, on social media, they have a reason to post that often because there are people that are com- consuming their content daily because it's fresh content. For example, if you follow a cooking channel, right? A new recipe a day, yeah, I'd love to watch that. Yeah. But for example, I don't know, a Mercedes is telling me the same thing in five different yeah, ways. Yeah, I have enough to, to talk about. Yeah, exactly. Why would I care? And again, just to sort of shit on this a little more. <laughs> there's a reason that even the creators who used to do that are fucking taking digital detoxes, right? They're, yeah. they're done with this constant shorting out of content. And if they as human beings realize that that's unsustainable for a human being, you should look at your team and your agency in the same light. Right? Like, I cannot force these kids to keep doing this just because I don't know algorithm. You know, yeah. algorithm what? The algorithm is completely different from what it was through the 2017-18. Yeah, no, fair enough. And like, yeah, like you said, then you reach a point of burnout, right? Because it's a lot. Like 30 posts. Of, it's essentially a post every day, all year round. And now they're asking for reels. Now they're asking yeah. for reels every day. Uh, I'm I'm absolutely okay doing it. What I'm saying is, you need to you need to have like a learning period, you know, three or four months of a learning period for you to understand what works on your page, and that means testing out different things. If you're testing out thirty different things in a month, you're not learning anything. You're always trying to put out yesterday's fires as opposed to chasing tomorrow's problems, uh, and that to me just seems like a very redundant way to work. I know a lot of I mean the the, the big challenge with TNT is trying to sort of meet in the middle because yeah. uh, a lot of clients don't prescribe to the way that we're, we're sort of doing things. Mm-hmm. The hope is that within a year that that maybe changes. Okay, two questions. One, um, that you said, like a lot of clients don't think similarly. Do you then say no to them? 
like we can't work with you or do you try to convince them we have let go of our first client uh, already despite being 3 months old precisely because you know we just sat together and we were like okay uh this is just not what we sort of stand for and that's absolutely fine you know yeah. it's it's no hard feelings right it's yeah. just hey if this is what you want then here's a list of agencies that will do it for you we're just not one of them uh, yeah like a relationship it's yeah. not something is it scary to let go of a client uh, that's oh. <laughs> that you when you just yeah it's scary but i think in the long run it's the good nose that you remember right that that stop you from compromising on what you think principally a agency yeah i think like. early on it's important to set the right precedence for the team and for yeah, the and i'm really committed to my team where i can't go back on on all exactly. the stuff that i promised them when i got them on board right and uh for me that mattered more than 100% making a billable every month do i need to make the need to figure out how to, uh, fix that problem yeah and we have fixed it already but uh, in this industry there there is always more fish in the sea always yeah sometimes the fish work with different fishermen as well right there's no one guy that only works with one agency yeah. right okay oh and that's a model that's changing more and more like there is if you take the larger companies like mncs or even very large listed companies and stuff the model has already changed to have one network agency yeah. on retainer yeah. and then a bunch of different projects they execute with independence because you need that freshness you need to see that yeah. is there someone out there who's going to completely switch this up for us yeah. and that's i think i've seen that across so many large companies that's too. true and and uh, what the bigger network agencies are trying to do is acquire all these indie agencies <laughs> and put them on the one banner right so while you will see a lot of independent agencies coming up you will see almost like this uh conglomerate being formed like for example webchat is on webchat it's dentsu yeah, yeah. yeah right because i think agencies are trying to just make sure that there's one stamp <laughs> or all brand of work that's out there yeah and okay yeah so the next question i had was if there's a new brand starting right now what is one piece of advice you would give them that's like different from whatever is out there like traditionally speaking one i think would be don't panic when you look at what's happening in the social landscape i know the urge to sort of throw everything out and have this you know like this amazing strategy in place uh and then execute that strategy and then fall flat on your face and then uh you know what i like to call it is all the agencies that sort of start you off catch the most flack because they're the ones that help you figure out what works and doesn't work but they catch the brunt of all the stuff <laughs> that doesn't work and eventually you'll find one agency that sort of gets it but that's discarding this entire legacy of learnings that you've had with your previous agencies uh, but that comes from this way of working with or approaching social with a sense of like panic and urgency yes urgency is important but i think one thing i would say is when it comes to social just fucking execute man like just <laughs> stop planning stop trying to like you know like think 10 times for every it's a yeah. social media post okay don't like it delete it come up with something else but the only way you're going to make any incremental learnings for a brand who is just new and coming to social is how can you how can you talk about an audience that doesn't exist yet <laughs> how can you strategize for a, for a follower that you don't even have just start putting shit out that you believe in uh, and that's why maybe having a strong founders approach to the content cuz they they have a strong understanding of who their tg is is important but just put that shit out try to get your learnings as fast as you can and then make your course corrections do not spend so much of time on strategy that you're just not executing anything right yeah uh, and it's social man if one post gets 6000 likes and another gets 100 big fucking deal <laughs> you go and look at any good brands page right now some of their posts are at 1000 some of their yeah. posts are at 50000 some of their posts are at 500 likes i don't know what this It's a B school case. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's also the pressure, I guess. Like every person slash brand also feels in terms of ROI. Like, yeah, what's my ROI? Oh my God, what's my ROI? You know, and that just takes the fun out of social. I mean. But that's again probably because of the corporate structure. Like the measurement for let's say a brand manager or an internal marketing manager. Yeah. Actually, you can shed some light light on this. What? was the measure of the success of your job at Swiggy where you were senior marketing manager yeah man i think you know uh the the more of a vice grip that i had on my agency the more metrics i gave them okay this 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 the lesser they sort of were able to deliver quality content i also had this 30 post a month fucking mindset right <laughs> and then when i loosened my grip uh and i told them don't 
don't give me 30. Like, give me 10. You know, give me fucking 7. You know, and but give me 7 really tight pieces. And if you look at what's happening on the Swiggy page today, okay, shout out to Sneha for my boss for like yep. letting me do this without like coming and asking me, why are we posting that? <laughs> uh, shout out to Vaishali who's currently doing it at the same time and was there before me. Uh, we just sort of let our agency fail for two months, but in a way where they held themselves accountable to every failure. And now you look at the kind of content that's on the page, dude. Yeah. Like it's this, it's such a distinct brand of social content. It's these fucking weird cat videos and we have <laughs> random animations and then we have like these self shot videos. Uh, I really feel like Swiggy has a very distinct voice when it comes to social now. And to me, the one metric that I always, the only metric that I chase was shares. That's it. I'm going to fuck about no reach. And you fuck about followers and give a shit about likes. When was the last time you liked a post? Yeah. Or commented on one? What do you do when you like something? You share it with Good, your yeah. friends, right? You share like 20 people, like ta 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 ta. So I just chase shares. You share shares, reach will come, followers will come, likes will come, comments will come. PR on media will come, all of that stuff. Uh, and so I think you got to that insight early on because today, if you see, Instagram actually has a number of. There's a reason. Yes, right? Yeah. yeah. The, the, that's the, the reason is probably because that's what. It's called you know, social. Is, it's called social. It, it, they want you to share stuff that you like with your friends. That's yeah. that's the whole point of it. I don't remember the last time I liked to post, right? And I'm fucking on there every day. Yeah. Uh, even uh, even if you look at a page that you don't sort of uh, a new page, it won't tell you who's liked it. It'll say followed by your friends. Yeah. Right. Which means that this is the kind of content that all of you are possibly going to share with each other. Uh, but those are the two things I chase. One was shares, and the second one was. Uh, on media mentions, which is your topical shit. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Why does that matter? Because I somebody, somebody once said that social samosa matters. So exactly. <laughs> so I personally don't agree with the on media. I don't agree with the calculation itself because I mean, it's just, it's been created in a way over time that benefits PR agencies, that benefits the publications, etc. But for example, even if you take, uh, you know, case studies that people send to cons or to curious yeah, yeah. at own media three crores what does it mean what does it mean um, i mean you know at the end everyone of the day, is earning the same three crores and that three crores is not valuable anymore right but, that's what i'm trying to say like that there is some brand manager that needs to justify yeah what's happening and why like why they possibly need more budget for social the only way that they can justify it is, hey, look, I've got 15 social samosa mentions this month. Hey, look, we got this uh, uh, this viral marketing thing that wasn't actually us, but was kind of us. We can't claim it. Uh, here, we got three crores worth of earned media. Yeah. You need to go up to your boss and be like, buddy, this is what I did. This is how I know to track stuff. Is the system fundamentally broken? Absolutely. Yeah. Come on, That's the thing. You said it, right? It's just what is three crores of earned media? Make this motherfucker the CEO, dude. Because he's going to go to work. There is, I mean, I think it's it's defaulting to what you kind of already know, as opposed to like sitting and rethinking everything, which is the same problem that we're facing, right? When you rethink something, it's very difficult to get everybody else to believe you, yeah. Because uh, you're assuming that they know all the things that that you are thinking about in your head, which is not the case. I mean, it's easier with startups because founders as personalities are slightly more open-minded but when you take like large corporates it's very difficult because you might be speaking to someone in the marketing team who understands what you're saying but the person that they're answering to yeah. you never speak to them and they're the ones who sign off on their KPAs and stuff like that so it's and they need to see structure they need to see measurement they need to exactly. see exactly I don't think social gets the importance uh, that it should today uh I mean, look at the difference between writing a print ad and a social media ad. Right? You, by default, who's getting paid more? The guy who's making the print ad. Where do you see better copy on social, right? On a daily basis. Yep. Yeah. Why don't you value value social monetarily as much as you value a print ad? This this is an entire conversation about the state of journalism globally right now, which. In like, which is really messed up because they still give more preference to print than digital. I don't get it. Social lets you like you can see your reach, you can see how many people you've engaged. A lot of the times, like your social post, which you spend no money on or a measly amount of money on, actually gets more reach and engagement than shares. 
you fucking people the commenting that, people, the can you comment that, on the print ad you can't comment on the print ad but the problem is that because you're not spending any money on it there's no roi attached to it from a from a company structure which is what i say i think you need to understand that social does what a print ad does if not better and why the fuck are billboards showing up on social <laughs> Uh, you say why the fuck are billboards in the world because social is not what starts on social it's what ends up on social yeah. right so i mean you can spend all your money on print ads and billboards but remember you will always come back to social media i feel like there is like some sort of a balance right especially in india do you think like print ads no, does not make a difference to indian consumer i personally think there is still some influence like mm. i feel it's one of the few countries where we still have like newspapers coming home every day or like just comparing like in the uk they give out newspapers out for free and still no one's taking it yeah here you know, people are paying and getting newspapers sent home every day so i still think there's some value to like i think done right yeah i think done right right you know done right a good print ad or a billboard still has a lot of like yeah punch but done right is yeah. you know the the key uh phrase or the key word to sort of look at i think and there is a very good example there's a billboard on wally c face digital billboard on by lakshmi media one of the largest out of home companies that billboard is placed so well on the c face like length that every evening right if i'm if i'm on that stretch between 5:30 to 8 pm i'm stuck in traffic hmm. and for almost 6 Just minutes continuously i am seeing whatever is playing on that yeah. Yeah. yeah so there is a way to do it right as you said and if you do it right that thing makes a hell of an it's impact difference, yeah it's like the banda cluster right like the little with the 18 billboards or yep. 18 or 20 i'm not sure i think they added more behind <laughs> uh, but like that's just something it's almost like a little landmark now right when you look at it it's like ah, okay this brand took it today this brand took it today yeah even like the amul ads like it's something that the city flyer but it's always the same billboard yeah. amul ads are always on that yeah, yeah that's that's this thing so like sometimes it's like you're waiting to see what they play and it's just that's maybe it. about the brand as well it's, but like i was having a discussion about this i think yesterday and i think also brands need to stay consistent with what they're doing like again this roi thing right cuz cuz your brand manager is looking at stuff quarterly and they don't have enough numbers to show you Uh, to show their boss that this worked quarterly, it's going to sort of die, and then they're going to not do it. Even though it might be a great idea, a good idea is also repetition, right? Yep. You hit it enough times, like like when I say Amul, the first thing that comes to mind would be butter, and then maybe the second thing is that that girl, right? But they've done it enough times for it to occupy more mind space in that little bracket called Amul in your head. Uh, but now brands are trying to do something different every quarter. <laughs> and when everybody's trying to break the clutter, the clutter is not breaking. Yeah. There's just more clutter. Uh, yeah like uh, going back to like that 30 posts a month it's just crazy to think that there are so many brands creating 30 posts a month and like people have to consume that much new stuff every oh, day people don't have like, to consume no in the se- in the sense of like when you're on your phone you're still getting like new things like nothing's going to register oh, well, no, no, the problem is in fact if if they want to talk about algorithm itself yeah if you don't engage yeah. with yeah. content that's coming on your feed so it's not appearing yeah. Yeah, no, fair enough. But still, like you're still getting there's so many sponsored posts nowadays. Sponsored is different because they're they're putting money behind it, so that's yeah. still. But what you're saying is very important because I think brands operate from this basic assumption that people come to social to interact with my brand. I'm sorry, sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> sorry to break it to you guys that it is not the case. Yeah. Tomorrow, if I took away every brand from social media, it will be it will become a better place. Hundred percent. Right? Yeah, agree. No one comes to social interact with your brand. They come to feel fucking validated. They come to show you how smart they can be in the comment section, how cute their cats are, <laughs> how nice they look in front of a mirror, and sometimes your brand can give them the platform to feel seen and heard. If your brand is not doing that, I don't know what you're doing on social. What do you? Why are you here? Yeah, agree. Like I don't follow any brand on Instagram. Like the only brand content I get is through like. either sponsor or just that come on my feed because yeah. i yeah memes i enjoy and it's like friends and maybe like okay yeah friends brands but yeah. not like something else yeah. that i'm nothing i mean no no don't come so to a lot of brands so but i i i follow a lot of brands but that's because i think like, in the industry so it makes a diff- like you're also curious to see what yeah i mean you no know, for example i i follow mercedes because and like bmw same reason because they do put out interesting stuff right like it's a whole range of different things they're showing me so it is content that i'm happy to consume like like bmw has this thing where they post like fan taken photos 
Yeah. And then there's like a vintage car. But, but, but then, what, did you, what did you just say, right? Fan taking photos. Right? They make their fans feel seen and heard. Correct. And you look at it, you're like, okay, this is a page that puts a spotlight back on its community, right? If you look at what Apple does, Apple's page is nothing but photographs. Yeah. It's nothing but photographs. The motherfuckers aren't even clicking those photographs themselves. <laughs> They're all clicked on, shot on iPhone, shot on iPhone. Right? So it is the ultimate UGC page. Yeah. And if you're not posting social like that, what are you doing? Right. I think I think understanding that would be a core and long awaited mind shift. Uh, but it'll it'll happen. You just need a lot oh, of it has to happen. You need you need you know there's a changing of the guard that happens, right? Yeah. The old guard moves out and then the new guys come in and I think people just need to take cognizance of the fact that there is a digital landfill as well. Yeah. Landfills yeah. are not just physical, there's also a digital landfill and everyone is a big contributor for it. Yeah. Like every time you take a photo of yourself, how many photos do you take? In that I one think frame. like freaking 30, 40 straight, man. Digital man. landfills. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there were boxing videos, you know. <laughs> I gotta take breaks so I can shoot the same video again. Uh, but that, it's cool, man. That's yeah. what, if that's what you like doing, that's that's what you yeah, gotta yeah. do. Yeah, yeah, no. Anytime, like, you're, even like the burst on iPhone, they are doing it because people exactly. are taking One of them will be good, yeah. yeah. Um, but I mean, like, yeah, we all contributed. Like, even us when we started the social media for breaking on even oh, yeah. we still like we post we still, yeah, yeah, yeah regularly just, just I mean, it's easy because they fall into that trap of like is. okay maybe one will go one will work one will hit but i think like uh like i said you know it's, it's easier when you know exactly what you're doing yeah. right? you guys with the podcast you will know that okay this is the conversation that i want to have when you're like this big fmcg brand that makes 30 things it's like, wow, <laughs> one social media page for all of it? Like, uh, good luck, man. Good luck to you, I hope. I wish you the best. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. So, let's understand a little bit more about your journey with a new thing. Yes. Um, we're going to play a game called Two Truths um, and One Lie. So, whether it is a challenge or your biggest achievement, the idea is you give us three statements from which two are true and one is a false statement. And then Anuj and I have to guess which one is the false statement. This has to all be work related. Doesn't have to. It can be anything part of your journey. Uh, ooh, okay. Do you want me to make it controversial or do you want me to? Sure. Spicy oh, no, 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 don't give him the power to make it controversial. No, uh, spicy or not? How, how do you want? How do you want? How do you, what do you guys want? I know lots of truths and lots of lies. Like, what do you want? What we want is two truths and one lie. Go for it. What genre it. do you want? Make it con- yeah, controversial. Yeah, make it. Um, I almost. Asked my boss to fire me. Uh, number two, I was dubbed as all exuberance, no talent. And three, I had little to absolutely nothing to do with one of the biggest awards I won in advertising. Now you guys are fucked trying to figure out what is what. Yeah. <laughs> okay, have you got yours? Yeah. I think number one is the lie. Is the lie. What was number one? You almost was, asked your boss to fire you. I think you'd must you must think. Have. You think? I was gonna say that, but like, okay, I'll say, um, I'll say the last one. I'll say that you, the you had little to do with uh, an award you won. That's you think false. that's a lie. Yeah. And you think the first one's a lie? Yeah. No, the first one is absolutely true. Uh, I was I sucked for a long time uh, at a job, and my boss was just having a discussion with me. I was just like, buddy. If this is not working out, fucking fire me. <laughs> just let me go. No keep me around. Let me just go. And to his credit, he did not let me go. Uh, but I think it Why was... Why didn't he let you go? Yeah, because I think it was more to do with me coming in thinking I'm this fucking badass and operating from, a, operating from a place of like, I know everything and closing myself off to feedback and learning. And to his credit, he was the best boss. Yeah, because every time he'd come down hard on me, He'd almost like help me pick myself back up again. Uh, but there was a point where I was just like, everything I know is bullshit. You just freaking <laughs> fire me. Dude. I know nothing. Let me go. Uh, and then he said, uh, I mean, how would you react if someone said that? You'd be like, okay, cool. You're fired. Or what would you say? Probably not. Imagine, imagine being in his shoes and then hearing that this guy wants me to fire him. What the fuck? Uh, I feel like if someone comes to me with so much confidence about that, like so much self-awareness as well, yeah. they would learn a lot more. So even I don't think I would have fired the person. Wow. For me, the way I would think of it is, if someone tells me that, my first thought would be, okay, this is how this person is feeling. Do I have the ability to bring them out of this hole? Mm. 
or is firing them the kick they need to pull themselves out yeah and i think i also didn't say it from a perspective of like fuck you fire me yeah exactly so yeah, exactly like, yeah. i'm just not able to do what it's you want me to i'm trying but yeah. then i think uh, like um cuz i feel like the people that actually need need is a strong word but to, like need to be fired are ones that don't know what's wrong Yeah. like they don't know how to fix the situation or they don't know why they're not doing well they don't even know that they're not doing well i i just no i knew that i was not doing that's right like i think that's the difference yeah. and i think you knew you would probably work towards yeah. fixing the situation and that's why it's all you know i was any new role whether you're starting your own agency or yeah. you're joining another company i think you need to give yourself 6 months to fucking suffer yeah. because yeah. you're in a new system you're doing stuff that you've never done before this you know this this tendency or this knee jerk reaction to panic is very strong because a lot a lot of the a lot of the beliefs are going to be challenged a lot of the way you work is going to be different and where where a lot open to dinner when we younger but when we older we need to think that oh, I'm fucking professional no I'm, <laughs> oh, I fucking know the you know, social media manager no man i think just just give yourself 6 months to just drag yourself through what should be a very tough yeah. phase but kicking and screaming this is the pressure that people create for themselves because even if you see take any large Again, I'm going to take the example of listed company CEOs, yeah. right? Uh-huh. The moment there's a CEO shift, the market itself is giving the new CEO time to figure things out. They say it's under new management, like you know, even the reports and everything are taking that into account and cutting the person some slack. So, yeah. if you're a 35 year old manager or like you know being put into a new role at a at a higher level, you should to definitely cut yourself some slack. I think you just know that it's part of the process. So, I mean, that that was the first this thing, which was. Uh, I asked him, but they didn't let me go. And then I think in the next six months, I was just like, I I don't want to leave. Like I fucking love this job. I almost like I got an offer to leave that job thrice from like a bigger company. And I was like, fuck off. I'm happy, here. you know. And that was like a really good phase in my life. Then uh, what did you say? Mine was that. Hers was the last one. The last one. That, that um, the you had very little to do with something that you won an award. That's the lie, right? Yeah. I think you got it right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Why would you think that that's true, dude? Just because you said you were controversial, <laughs> oh, so yeah. I thought that you know maybe there's like something oh, I don't know. Uh, no. That's yeah. a lot. That's too controversial, don't <laughs> really? Yeah, but I don't know. That's you. You got yeah. it right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And um, so the second one was that you were titled. All the jubilees were titled. No, that, yeah. so that yeah. was <laughs> true. Oh, okay. It was my first job, uh, and I was actually a planner. who then got into like copywriting mm-hmm. uh and i was like one of those uppity ad school dudes which is you no know, i fucking figured out like, give me give me anything my problem was that i was i was a lot of exuberance i don't know if i had the talent given the fact that i was just fresh out of advertising school and all the stuff that i spoke to you guys about right like you go in thinking it's going to be like this yeah. which are actually doing <laughs> something else and uh, it was actually really weird okay cuz there was a script that we had to write for this car company uh and like i was just in office trying to come up with as many scripts as i was like no i'm going to crack this script <laughs> so i go up to him and i'm like yeah, 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 this is the script of course he rejects all of it the next morning he comes to the office and in, we have like 250 people on the office floor right and then uh, he starts off giving the speech about how all these young people i tried to give them a shot nothing no no <laughs> juice nothing and then he calls me and then and i was like oh shit oh shit oh shit he's like yeah, when when i put up a fight i was like ah But he's all exuberance and no talent. I'm like, wow, dude. Oh my god. Uh, but that's something that sort of stuck with me. Uh, but uh, I guess I'm better off now than I was. But uh, do not panic. Like if I yeah. took that to heart, uh, it would have really, really sort of unhinged my professional career. But uh, advertising people used to be assholes. I'm, I'm, I'm glad. glad I'm glad that that generation of advertising professional. is no longer welcome in this industry you need to be 100% you need to be a you need to be a head knocker but you have actually have to knock heads right yeah no in fact even you know this is a conversation that i've had with uh, gnpg also which is that see what's missing from today's industry about the mad men days so as to call it is the glamour hmm. right and that excitement what's not missed is the behavior yeah that is the, more than happily in the past but that glamour and you know it used to mean something to say i'm an i'm an advertising that is a professional yeah i i mean i i watched mad men like what 15 times <laughs> uh i mean also cuz it's a fucking great show 
not because of all of the narratives and yeah. the stuff, but just it's just such a well-made show, man. Every time you watch it, you're noticing something else happen. But what you're saying is true. It's it's this glamorization of all the wrong things that a lot of people did get into the industry to be a part of, and I'm very happy that that doesn't sort of exist anymore. It's, even when we, even when my batch of kids got into it, right, it was very easy to see. Oh, okay, this is how it's supposed to be. Yeah. But with my batch is when the culling of it happened. So even all of us were like, "Oh shit, this is a piece of sh- this is all bullshit." We were like, <laughs> yeah. rearrange. Uh, so I'm happy that it happened with me uh, in 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 that sort of period of time. But yeah, uh, I mean, it's still. Yeah, I mean, I, I still can't explain to my mom what I do. <laughs> <laughs> she just doesn't get it. But it's it's the price you pay, man. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, fair enough. Um, cool. Let's go on to our next game. So yes. this one's called Red Flags. We're going to give you three hypothetical situations. Uh, each situation has two things that are going great, mm-hmm. and then one that's not so great, which is the red flag. Um, of course, these are adapted for you. Okay. So I'm going to read you these nine statements, and then you have to choose which situation you'd rather be in. So situation one is TNT has grown to 80 employees. TNT has won several awards at distinguished platforms, but you personally are making much less money than before. So situation two is even the masses beyond advertising professionals now know of TNT. Your average ROI for clients is well beyond industry average, but three of your strongest team members leave to start their own agency. Hmm. Situation three is TNT's client roster is really wide range and really solid. You have an acquisition offer on the table. Hmm. But the partnership with talented ends, although on good terms. Got it. So yeah, these are your three situations. Well, I wouldn't ever pick situation one because I have no intention of growing TNT to eighty employees. I think we're gonna we, we have a vision to just be this lean agency of like fifteen to twenty max. Uh, several awards and distinguished platforms, firstly making much less money than before. Uh, well, I feel like we've already won a few awards this year, or we will. Even the masses we are in, you are average or friends, well beyond industry average. Three of your strongest team members leave. I think I choose situation two, man, because uh, obviously I'd love for my team to stay with me for the next 10, 15 years. Uh, but I'm assuming that I've hired very ambitious yep. creative people. <laughs> so if they do want to stay with me long beyond the point where I'm able to teach them something new, either one, I made a wrong hire or I'm that fucking good. I'm not <laughs> leaning, I'm not leaning towards the latter. Uh, I'm leaning towards the fact that just by the definition of hiring, you know, type, not type A, but like type A, B, but highly driven, self-motivated people, they should want to start their own yep. agency. And the good thing about the talent that did, right, is you don't have to break off and start. You can start something within the network itself. So if they have an idea, why would you not want to be in this ecosystem that has all of the best talent in the industry, right? Yep. I don't think there's anyone doing the kind of work that, that of course Stanley is trying to do and the campaigns that we worked on together in my opinion have been some of the most fun campaigns to work on because my guys are seeing how things work on that side of the fence they're seeing how it works on our side of the fence I'm in the middle trying to play clients so that we can <laughs> anticipate what the client says uh, but I think a yeah, situation to is the best situation man the only downside is three of my strongest team members leaving to start their own agency and you wouldn't pick situation three what is situation three uh no, I'm, I wouldn't pick situation three because it's, how would that work? Gautam and PG are also part of TNT. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, uh, no, I have no intentions of uh, selling my agency anytime soon. You know, because then it stops being my agency. Then it stops. Yeah. Then it stops. Like I've seen this happen. You know, and then you become part of the big network, and then suddenly you can't pay the, you can't pay people what you want to pay them. Correct. You can't say no to clients. You can't uh, can't make decisions as a leader but you still appear you have the the shape and form and looks of a leader but you're not actually the leader yeah anymore Uh, that's true fair enough so yeah now our last segment is the rapid fire got it so self-explanatory we'll ask you questions and then you have to give us quick and uh short answers so the first question is how many days of leave have you taken in the last year oh i have not taken a leave in a few years. Oh. Yeah. Apart from the fact that I've fallen sick. Yeah. Okay. Um, Not even at Swiggy or? Hardly, I think. Wow. I mean, when you're a social media manager, how can you, even if you say that, <laughs> how, how can you take a leave? Because you have to keep looking at the WhatsApp group. But yeah. That's true. Yeah. 
uh, your proudest moment with the new thing? Uh, I think we got on board our two clients in the like in the first two months, you know, and for for an agency that just come out of nowhere, who's not started by the big shot, like I <laughs> said, you know, uh, for us to be able to sign clients like that, uh, I can't take the names of the clients, right? Like, yeah, like yeah, we've got them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like we signed signed Mintra in the first two months, uh, so we're handling all of that Twitter. In our first month, we banged out nine social samosa mentions for whoever's <laughs> and, all that. Uh, and we've also got the mandate for uh, Carl Pay's new venture, CMF. Oh, nice. Uh, his new nice. tech wearable brand and Nothing Phone as well. So we're going to be starting the Nothing India presence. So it's a page that we've start, started from scratch or will be starting from scratch. Uh, I think to win wow. new clients like that yeah. is pretty fucking cool. That's damn good. Yeah. Uh, I'm excited because we're growing our team. And the kind of talent that I bring in, I'm excited to see what they do with the accounts that we have. Uh, and we have a few more projects underway, I think. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, what was the one time you felt like you let the new thing down? Me? Yeah. Oh, uh, I think, you know, and this is where like Gotham and PG came in uh, to really sort of sort me out, which is as someone who's never done this before, as someone who's never like sort of wanted to start their own thing, the trap of like the minute you get something wrong, you're just like, oh no, now it's all going to fall apart. I think my my no reflex, like uh, I've, I've relaxed that a lot more, but in the start, I was just very <laughs> like in my own way all the time, you know, and I was just like, everything has to be perfect and everything has to be rosy and every, every time it's not like that, I'm like desolate and yeah. you're like, oh my God, everything's going to fall apart. Uh, but I think that behavior, more than a moment, I think that behavior yeah. is something that I thought would have, it was not fair to my, my the guys that I got on board. It's not fair to my, my, my co-founders. Uh, this is just what the job looks like, man. And it's like I said, that six month period, yeah. <laughs> just blitz through it, you'll, you'll be fine. Like anyone who's panicking about their job right now, Give it six months, you will be fine. You will start looking back and be like, oh, I'm such a fucking idiot for worrying exactly. about all that shit. Like, it's, it's not easy, but it's just your brain learning how to function differently. It's your body. I have an, yeah, I have an interesting story, but yeah. uh, which, which is like related to that, but yeah. we'll get to that later. But that's what it is. I mean, you just uh, don't panic, man. I think in the industry that moves as fast as it does, which is marketing and social, just put your seatbelt on, relax, <laughs> all good. Uh, one company you really want to work with? Oh man, uh, I would love to work with the UFC if they ever bring a presence to India. I'm a huge, huge, huge MMA fan. Shout out to Anshul Jibbal. Uh, <laughs> you know, even though you lost fucking with you, man. Uh, but I love, like, even when I was in, in advertising in the agency, we, we, I, did, I handled the entire social media for this thing called Super Fight League which is now Matrix Fight League. So I know all the fighters. Uh, if they come to India, that's my dream client. I mean, fucking Dana White, please. <laughs> uh, just, yeah, I think, I think it's a brand that I'm very passionate about. Yeah. And in my head, I know exactly what we need to do with that kind of client. Uh, nice. I'm also a fighter myself. So Correct, like, exactly. Yeah. 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 Uh, what is the scrappiest thing that you've done to build your business? We're a, we're, we're bootleg, like, we're, like we're a bootleg agency, right? So I think, Scrappy. I think everything we do is <laughs> scrappy. scrappy. Yeah. Like where, where this, uh, I mean, I don't want to use the word scrappy to describe my agency, but I think everything that we do is is more like trying to work smart and trying to make the best of what we have, or trying to really squeeze out as much as we can out of any piece of work uh, in a way that benefits the client as well. So asking friends, friends of friends, putting shit on our stories to get the yeah. job done. Yeah, yeah, we we'll do what it takes to get the job done. I think. Nice. Um, your emotion when you first fired someone? Well, I've never, I've never fired anyone yet. Uh, but I think it would, it would be one of... Can I... Hypothesize? Yeah, 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 of course, of course. I think it would be regret because, I mean, you need to remember that you did see something in this person to hire yeah. them in the first place. So I think regret because it didn't work out, number one. And two, you do have a part to play in that and three would be I mean you have to look at someone who you kind of sold a dream to and tell them that you know sorry buddy you're not part of this 
anymore. So I think that, yeah. Regret, I think, would be. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what did or will you do with your first profit? With my first profit? Yeah. Which has already happened. What would? Yeah. It's already well, happened. I mean, like on paper, but what? What nice. do you mean? So what? What did you? What do did you do with? Yeah. What will I do with it? Like personally? Yeah. yeah. Put it back into the company, man. Yeah. So I fuck with me. What do you think? Do you think I'm some kind of guy who lives like a king on the top? No, no. I put it back into the company. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Um, books or podcasts? Ooh. Are you writing a book? Are you guys writing a book? Anyways? No. <laughs> I uh, I would say books, but podcast podcasts are a close second. Okay. Only because I think uh, then this is not to throw shade at you guys. No, 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 please. At all. <laughs> yeah. There's just so many fucking podcasts. Yeah. You know, there's just there's so much. You know, and unlike a book where I can just like turn to a different page and just speed read, with a podcast you have to like listen. And listen and listen and listen <laughs> until you can figure out okay is this for me is this not. I think with books it's a lot faster. We knew you'd have this opinion. That's why the yeah, <laughs> yeah. So thing. for me it's books. Yeah. For me. Okay. Um, an iPad or a notebook? iPad. Uh, are you a morning person or a night owl? I'm a morning person and a night owl. Wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and your favorite social media platform? My yeah. favorite social media platform is Instagram, yeah. hands down. Yeah. I mean, I like Twitter. It's a very combative platform. But I'm just on Instagram a lot more. all day. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. So yeah, that concludes our rapid fire. Amazing. But uh, before we let you go, we ask every guest to ask our next guest a question. So your question is. Hey. Um, so something I'm really curious to know about is, um, if you had to create something from scratch as a second-time founder, uh, as of today, right? Uh, you being in XYZ sector since the past couple of years. Which is the market you would really run after? Uh, why and what would you really like to you know build from there onwards? Oh, yeah. So I, mean, I fucking started yeah. dojo, bro. Like I would yeah. start. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Like this is a huge part of my life. Of if you make marketing and advertising the only thing that you do in life, <laughs> uh, hats off to you, man. But uh, no, I mean, I started dojo for sure. I, I might even start a dojo. I've been trying to like figure out. How to do that, but I think that's something I'm very passionate about as well. Yeah. Uh, so that's what I would do. I would not get into marketing again once is enough. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I would start a dojo, yeah. Nice. And I might just on the side as well. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for for giving us your time for coming here. Thanks, man. For yeah. giving us. This has been tickling me uh... <laughs> the entire podcast. And this has just been like every time I turn my neck, it's just. Uh... Sorry about but that. <laughs> I should recommend like shorts so that you know. Yeah. yeah okay. So, yeah. Just a little bit of technical feedback. But thanks for having yeah. me, man. Thanks. Thank uh, you so much. Uh, it's I, been great, like breaking down the entire like advertising yeah. industry. I'll see like, if I still have clients in a job after this. <laughs> <laughs> when does the episode come up? Uh, Mid December. Oh, so I have time. Yeah. yeah. You have time. Yeah. 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 You should start doing your damage control. Damage control. <laughs> yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah, I mean, for everyone listening, we also had uh, an episode with Gotham and uh, PG. The talented founders that we were speaking about, yeah. so you can check that out. And the link in the description. Yes. Yeah. If you want to tell them to subscribe, smash that like yeah. button. And subscribe. <laughs> and don't forget to subscribe for yeah. more updates. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. <laughs>